Hi and welcome to the Boulder Healthier Youth Champions Physical Activity Webinar. This is an opportunity for us to share with you as youth champions in the Boulder Healthier uh, program some information around physical activity. Some of it you might know already but some of it you may not and it's a great opportunity just to refresh yourselves understanding about the role of physical activity in health and what you as Boulder Healthier Youth Champions can do with your friends, with your family, in school or university, everywhere when you're out and about and you're having conversations you can help us get the city more active which in turn will save lives and reduce uh, diseases like diabetes but also can improve conditions like dementia physical activity is a really wonderful uh, way of improving our health not just because it works really well but also because actually it's a lot of fun and the important bit to understand about physical activity is lots of different ways of doing it so let's get into it. I'm Dr Justin Varney, I'm the Director of Public Health for Birmingham City Council and I'll be telling you about physical activity in today's webinar. So first of all I thought it was useful to just settle out a bit about language because we use terms like physical activity and exercise and in our head each one of us has got a sense of what does that mean to us as a person but might not be the same thing for your friends um, or to the people you're talking to. So actually having a bit of a kind of common language can be really helpful. So when we think about physical activity, physical activity is anything which involves bodily movement produced by skeletal muscles that requires energy expenditure. So what that means is movement like reaching to the sky or touching your toes, all of that involves muscles which are connecting bones together and that's why they're called skeletal muscles, muscles that are connected to your skeleton and the movement is requiring energy um, and therefore your body's having to burn its resources, its calories, um, it's using up the muscles itself, the proteins that make the muscles, so it requires that energy to make the movement happen. Exercise is a form of physical activity and in general when we're talking about exercise we're talking about things that you've planned to do, it's quite structured, it's often repetitive and it's got a bit of a purpose, so exercise could be doing press-ups, um, exercise could be playing football, exercise can even be dancing, um, all of those are forms of exercise, so exercise is a subsection of physical activity. You know, physical activity can be getting up and going to do the shopping and although that walking is a form of physical activity we wouldn't necessarily describe it as exercise in the same way so um, useful to understand that. The other term you'll hear people use a lot is physical inactivity. Now in the United Kingdom we define physical inactivity as less than 30 minutes of moderate physical activity a week and I'll talk a little bit later about what's moderate versus vigorous physical activity but the thing to get in your head is less than 30 minutes a week is what's called inactivity and that's the level at which that you really you're not getting any benefit at all from being active and they're the people that we really need to get moving because if we can get people above 30 minutes it's not as good as getting to the recommended levels of 150 minutes a week but it does start to make a difference so anything above 30 you're really starting to have an impact on your health and you need to build up from that but unfortunately lots of us are still not moving enough fast enough or intense enough to actually improve our health there are lots of different forms of physical activity. So whether you're someone that likes swinging from bars in the playground, doing gymnastics, whether you've got inspired by the Commonwealth Games to go out and pick up a, a cricket bat uh, or a tennis racket or go for a swim, it doesn't matter how you get physically active. And, and when we're talking about physical activity, really it's the type of activity where you start to feel a little bit warm, get a little bit breathy, but you can still have a conversation. That's moderate physical activity. The type when you're really sweating and you're really panting, that's vigorous physical activity. But there are loads of different ways of getting active and frankly, some of them have got slightly different benefits from others. But it doesn't really matter as long as you're moving, you're doing good things for your health. So we talked a bit about before about different intensities, so how hard you're working when you're moving. <coughs> so one of the terms you'll hear people talk about is being sedentary. That's basically when you're sat on your bum sitting down. So when you're sitting and you're not moving, like working at a desk or sitting watching TV, those muscles aren't really working at all. And so you're not burning energy, you're not getting the health benefits. There's light activity that could be things like just taking the rubbish out to the bin, doing your chores, carrying the um, plates from the table to go wash them up for mum and dad. That's just light. 
it's useful, but it's not really doing much for your for your cardiovascular health, for your heart health. It is, however, possibly helping you about balance and things like yoga and Tai Chi, which are very light in terms of their uh, the amount your muscles have to work, have got real benefits in terms of your stability, your balance and your hand eye coordination. Moderate physical activity, and this is the one where most of us need to get our physical activity, is things like having a relatively brisk walk, cycling, shopping, going up and down stairs. Those kind of things are considered moderate physical activity. Vigorous activity, that's where you're really starting to get a bit hot and sweaty. You find it hard to have a conversation while you're working out in a vigorous way. Good game of football, dancing, swimming, all of those are vigorous activity. And then you get very vigorous activity, and that's the kind of high intensity training that people do, those kind of real workouts in the gym. But for most of us, to get to the amount of activity that we need every week, um, it's moderate is the best way to go. Um, building it a bit vigorous now and then, brilliant. It's really good to have a, a session, at least one or two sessions a week where you get really vigorous activity. But for most of us, the important bit is focusing on getting that moderate activity in every day. So how much do you need? Well, if you're a, a young person, um, you should be aiming for about 60 minutes a day. So that's really for children between five and young adults up to, to 18. Um, and that's 60 minutes of moderate activity. Now that can be averaged out across the week, but you're basically trying to get an hour in every day. And that's quite a lot when you think about it, when you've got homework to do and school to do. That's why some schools doing things like the Daily Mile is really good because it gives you 15 minutes and then you've only got 45 minutes still to get. Walking to work, uh, sorry, walking to school or cycling to school can really make a difference. If you get the school bus, getting it a stop later, walking to a different site to get the bus and getting off a stop earlier, all of that will help you get a little bit more walking into the day. Having a dance around the living room with your mates, all good. You know, there are lots and lots of different ways of getting this activity. The other thing that's really important for children and young people is reducing the amount of time you spend sitting. Now, I know that sounds easy to do, but, but the challenge is, you know, all of us watch TV, we're doing homework, we're playing computer games, all of that's designed to have us sitting in one place. And the problem is when you sit down, your body is forgetting all of the good stuff that it's been doing while it's being active. So you can undo some of your physical activity if you sit too much. So breaking up your activity, your sitting time by getting active every hour is a really good way of doing it. You know, just set an alarm on your clock or on your watch or on your phone so that every hour you at least stand up and stretch. That will start to break up the sedentary activity and that's a really important part of your health. So we look at what's happening about young people in Birmingham. Now, obviously, the pandemic was a bit of a weird time in the academic year for 2020 to 21. So we know that across the country, levels of activity in children, and young people really reduced because you weren't going to school. And a lot of a lot of young people get that physical activity every day by walking to school and home again um, or playing football or cricket or sport at school or after school club all of those things stopped happening so it's not surprising that that light blue line at the top which shows that the young people that are achieving 60 minutes a day really drop down but the line that i really want you to pay attention to is the dark blue line in the middle that's the proportion of young people, the percentage of young people in Birmingham who are not even achieving 30 minutes a day of being active. And that sat between kind of 35 or 30 percent and 40 percent. That's quite a lot. At least a third of the young people in Birmingham are not doing enough physical activity to protect their health. And when you're young, this is really important because that's the time when you build your muscles, um, you build your bone strength. And it's quite hard. It's much harder when you're older like me to rebuild that bone, to, to strengthen it, to build your muscles. If you've done it as a young person and you've laid the foundation, much, much easier to reignite those muscles and, and that strength when you're older than if you haven't done it when you're younger. So why should you be physically active? Well, there's loads of reasons, particularly around your health, and I'll talk a bit about the health um, benefits in a minute. But there's also good reasons for your own mental health and well-being. We know that physical activity can reduce the risk of depression and anxiety. 
short 10 minute brisk walk every day is as effective as treating someone with depression using first line medicines. So it's much easier, it's much safer for people to be physically active than it is to take drugs. So actually, if we were all a bit more active, we'd have much better mental health and well-being. Being physically active can also improve your opportunities of employment, uh, it can improve your self-confidence. You know, there's some really interesting research around how people are active every day, carry themselves when they go into job interviews. That actually being active, because it impacts on your posture, you sit a little bit straighter, you have your shoulders back, you breathe in a different way um, because your body's used to being under uh, tension, uh, working and exercise. So you're generally just a bit stronger uh, and that can be a real benefit for physical activity. So it can give you that sense of self-confidence. So there's lots of other reasons other than health. We also know actually that young people who are more active, their brains get more oxygen because the blood's pumping faster and they do better at school. Now, I have to say that's not brilliant research, but there is pretty consistent message from the research that kids that are more active do do better at school. So if you're trying to bump up your grades, being active is going to help you a little bit. But when we look at the impact for health, this is the really important bit to think about. You know, often, unfortunately, people get physical activity and obesity kind of overlapping. And the reality is you've got to do a lot of activity to outrun a chocolate bar. Um, and actually, if you want to deal with your weight, if you're struggling with your weight, please talk to your school nurse or to your GP. You, what you want to focus on is what you're eating, a bit less than being active. Whatever your weight, whatever your age, being active is better than being inactive. So it's better to be fat and fit than fat and sitting around and sedentary. You know, being fit, being active, and that doesn't mean everyone has to look like the front cover of a magazine, but it is about being able to run up and down stairs without getting short of breath, being able to walk with your friends and have a conversation and still feel great at the end of it. All of that is, is an important part of being physically active. We know that when you're physically active, you're building your bone strength, your muscle strength. It's also improving your heart health and your brain health. You know, there are over 40 different health conditions that physical activity reduces the risk of, including conditions like cancer. Women who've got a high risk of family history of breast cancer being physically active every day can reduce the risk of developing breast cancer. So these are really scary diseases. And by simply just getting a bit more active, we can reduce our risk of developing them. So how can we be physically active? Well, it sounds really easy, doesn't it? And, you know, the, in reality is most of us are struggling, juggling things, classes, homework, work, friends, family, all of those commitments. And then someone says, well, actually, I'd like you to squeeze in an extra hour of being active. And the key to making physical activity part of your life, part of your friend's life and your family's life is to make it fun. Make it something that you just do because it's fun, it's worth doing and it's part of your routine. If you're someone that has a dog, walking the dog's a great way to be active. Doing exercise with friends or family can be fun. Going out for a walk with your parents or with your brothers or sisters or with your friends is a great way to connect. But you have different conversations than when you're sat around uh, a table. So actually being out and about and seeing things and discussing them makes it much more fun. You building into your everyday routines, how you get to school, how you go shopping, you know, all of those things, how you go to see your mates. Yeah, you know, if you can walk there or cycle there, even if you're going to get the bus there, you know, starting a stop later, getting off a stop earlier, all of that are, are ways of building physical activity into your life without really having to think about it. And then there's loads of clubs and classes across Birmingham that you can get involved in, whether you want to learn judo, uh, whether you want to do Tai Chi, whether you want to do street dance, there's lots of opportunities out there. And a lot of them are subsidised, so they're cheaper or they're free for children, and young people. So really have a look out and find out what's going on in your local area, because there is quite a lot available. If you're really active in your school and you're one of our champions who's trying to make a difference in the school that you're at, we know that schools can do a lot to support physical activity. And that can be simple things like making sure that there's safe and secure bike parking for the young people who want to cycle into schools. And there's funding to support that for the school. Um, it might be about integrating the Daily Mile, for example, that 15 minutes a day where every class um, is physically active going uh, around the school, moving with their teachers so that everyone gets just a little bit active every day. 
There are free resources to support PE in school. There's funding available for schools to draw down around PE equipment, um, but also about supporting young people so that if you have got challenges, you know, if you've got hand-eye coordination issues, if you've got uh, mobility impairment, you know, um, the teacher's there to help and there's a lot of support to help them help you. So really thinking about how as a school you become an active school can be something that everyone can get involved in. Everyone's got an opinion on. <coughs> Sorry. And it's a lot of fun. You know, lots of schools do school challenges. You know, I've seen schools where they compete against each other to get enough, uh, walk far enough as if you've walked to Cairo or you've walked to Cape Town. You know, it's a kind of pedometer challenge. And you don't need fancy kit for this. Often, if you've got a smartphone, for example, that will be monitoring your steps anyway. Um, but there are also uh, support available to schools to get some of the cheap pedometers, the little things that you clip on that just track how many steps you do. So there are lots of ways to make this fun, to give lots of opportunities. You can have dance-a-thons, skip-a-thons, um, all sorts of things are out there. And the great thing about it is you can also challenge your teachers and get them involved because it's really important for adults as well as young people to get physically active every day. There's lots of technology out there and, and I know, you know, there are loads of things on here that you won't know about or you'll know about that I won't know about because when I was your age, things like TikTok didn't exist. Um, but there are lots and lots of fun ways to get involved using tech. So if you're a young person that's really into kind of your tech stuff, um, there's lots of availability out there. What is interesting is when you look at the science behind them, quite a lot of these are great for people that are already active, but they're not brilliant for people that are just starting out. Some of the ones that I kind of recommend that do help people with they're just starting out, things like Pokemon Go, Zombie Run's really fun. It's a, an audio um, game where basically you're walking, um, but you can hear the zombies chasing you. And as they get closer, it's quite scary. So probably one for those of you that are a little bit older, but it can be quite an incentive when you're out, particularly if you're walking uh, in the winter when things are a little bit dark and a little bit creepy. Couch to 5K is another one that's just worth mentioning. Um, it's designed to help people that really aren't active getting active, and it just starts with simple walking challenges and you build up over time to be able to run 5K. Um, that's five kilometres. So, you know, that can be a really good way of doing it as well. But what I would say with all of these is they're so much easier to use if you're doing them with your mates. You know, actually getting active with friends um, or with family makes it so much more fun and so much more enjoyable. And you're much more likely to stick with it because all of us have days where we kind of just want to hide under the duvet. But if you're doing it with some friends, then that gives you that extra little bit of motivation to keep up with it. There's lots of stuff available online. There's loads of videos, there's loads of uh, guides, toolkits, resources, webinars. Um, there's a great thing for, for those of you who've got younger brothers and sisters. There's a thing called 10 Minute Shake Ups, which is a, a national campaign. And they've got a partnership with Disney. So they take the favorite Disney characters and they do a whole physical activity routine with them. So, you know, for, for those of you who've got uh, smaller kids in your life who are obsessed with whether it's Frozen or Toy Story or whatever the latest thing is, there is a bunch of games that are specifically tailored uh, and designed around those characters with videos and clips and ways that the young children can get engaged. So it's worth having a look at, actually. They're quite fun, even if you're a little bit older like me, um, when you want to just do something that's a little bit different and a little bit more involved. So I hope today we've given you a bit of an overview that's useful and giving you a lot of information uh, there and you'll have access to the slides afterwards so that you can read a bit more and, and obviously have access to the links that are involved in them. Being physically active is something that we can all do. Whatever your ability, it doesn't matter. Getting moving will make a difference to your health and your well-being. It'll make you happier. It'll make your life uh, longer uh, and it will also improve um, the blood flow to your brain and that can be really helpful around exam times. But physical activity is one of those things where you've got to find what works for you. So although someone in your life might be football mad, that might not be the thing that works for you. So try out different things, have a go and see what you enjoy. Because the important bit about physical activity is it needs to be fun as well as something that's just important to build into your life.
So aim to focus for at least 60 minutes a day. It doesn't have to be all together. You can do 10 minutes here, five minutes there, but you want to aim for 60 minutes a day, every day of physical activity, and you'll really start to see the difference. It will set you up now, but it also sets you up for later in life. So we're really grateful for the support you give us as Boulder Healthy Youth Champions, and I hope this webinar has given you some information and some tools to go and have conversations with your mates, with your school, with your family, and just help all of us move a little bit more across Birmingham. Have a great day. Go out and get active.